Hey, what's up? You guys want to give this a shot? Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's really easy. And, uh, two very easy questions just to see, you know, <laughs> if you guys are smarter than a fifth grader. I feel that show. I can't say long though, so I hope it's not anything like long. <laughs> No, 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 no. Here, let me, um, let me start from the beginning. I didn't even get a chance to reset, but two very easy questions and they have to do with water. Hey, how's it going? Hello. You want to give this a shot? Yeah, how, how long will it take? Uh, less than five minutes, a okay. couple minutes. Yeah, Perfect. Okay. So, very easy. Two very easy questions and they have to do with water. Okay. So, I have three water bottles here mm -hmm. and they're halfway filled with water. Mm -hmm. And I painted the water blue with food coloring just to make it easier to see. Another thing to note about these three water bottles is that they're all at rest. Okay. So they're all here on Earth at rest, obviously. So how I'm showing you them, what's the difference between these three water bottles? So in this first one, I have three water bottles and they're halfway filled with water. And I painted the water blue with food coloring just to make it easier to see. Mm. Another thing to note about these three water bottles is that they're all at rest. You guys know what that means, right? Okay, so how I'm showing you these, okay, let's put them in order. How I'm showing you these, What's the difference between the three water bottles? So in this first one, I have three water bottles and I filled it halfway with water and I painted the water blue with food coloring just to make it easier to see, right? So all of these water bottles are at rest. So how I'm showing you these three water bottles, what's the difference between them? Um, this one, the other one, I can't. This one is supposed to, this one's upside down, this one's right side up, this one's on the side. On the side, yeah. So well, actually, no, it's not. It's, it's I don't know what it is. Though. Wait, you say this one's upside down? Yeah. So you would say it goes like this? Yeah. Okay, yeah. and then this one? Sideways. I mean, it's yeah. not touching the thing, but sideways, yeah. Yeah, you're right. You got it. Yeah, I made sure that it didn't touch the bottoms because I didn't oh, want that to right. give it away. Okay. Um, but yeah, you guys got it. This is how it goes. And if I may ask, how did you guys figure it out, I guess? Because gravity. Yeah. The, the ball would yeah. flow. Yes, yeah. the ball flows on top of the water, right? Yeah. It doesn't flow underneath it. <laughs> yeah, so pretty easy, right? You guys got it. Position you laid them at? Yeah, yeah, you got it. Can you put them in the position I laid them to um, take the picture? Yeah, like this. Yeah. Like this. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> how, how did you know? I'm fine. I mean, it's pretty obvious, but can you explain it to me? The water, I don't know. The water always settles at the yeah. bottom, and the air always settles at the top, uh -huh. right? Yeah, uh -huh. it's pretty obvious, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. For the position of the box that they're in. Mm, yeah, yeah. So like the box is either this way. Oh, yeah, or upside down this way or on the side. You got it, right. Can you put them in the position they should be, I guess, based on what you just said? Based on that, so I guess this one makes sense. It'd be like this. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming this box would probably be sideways. Okay, you got that one. And then this one's probably going to be... Uh, not going to make any sense. I know this one's for sure. Uh, I'm looking at the ball. Oh! There you go. You got it. There you go. You got, got it. it. You got it. You got it. How did you figure that out? I'm gonna ask. Uh, I don't know. I guess. Would you say the 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 position of the water relative to the bottle? Would you say? I would say. I guess. I guess the, the position of the, of the ball. Of honestly. the ball. Honestly, yeah. The ball is kind of the. Because if the I remove giveaway. if I remove the ball though, you would still be able to figure it out, wouldn't you say? This one. Maybe not this one. Not these two? Yeah, maybe I mean, that, it'd, it'd be a bit more tricky for these two. <laughs> right. You probably still get to the answer, but this one would be still yeah. that giveaway. Right, right. So the real answer is because water is more dense than air. Mm. Would you agree? Water yeah. always is always in the bottom and air always stacks on top of the water because water is more dense. Would you agree? Especially when a water bottle is at rest. Yeah. The water always goes to the bottom, to the lowest point, and the air always stacks on top. Would you, would you guys agree? Yeah. yeah. So based on that fact, you can easily tell what orientation it should be. Oh. And especially if the water is at rest because it can't be like this because water cannot stick to the side yeah you know or, or it can't be like this because again water can't stick to the side like that that makes sense. so it's a physics very basic physics you know about yeah water, right you guys get it. Yeah, yeah so one more and then see if you guys can get this one this one's actually a little easier in my opinion but we'll see so in this one i have three box trucks and this one again halfway filled with water and this one though one of the trucks is accelerating forward one of the trucks is accelerating in reverse and one of the trucks is at rest okay here it is so in this one I have three box trucks, again, halfway filled with water, except in this one, one of the trucks is accelerating forward, one of them is accelerating in reverse, and one of the trucks is at rest. So in this one, I have three box trucks, and they're all halfway filled with water. But in this one, one of the trucks is accelerating forward, mm -hmm. one of the trucks is accelerating in reverse, and one of the trucks is at rest. Mm -hmm. So which one of these three is at rest? Definitely B. B. Yeah, you guys yeah. got it. Why would you guys say B? Because it's not... 
moving. The water's Sliding. not moving. Exactly. Yeah. It's not. It's not displacing. You can yeah. say, right? Yeah. This exactly. It's breaking for sure. No. We, we want, if, if we had to say which one's accelerating in reverse, which one is yeah. accelerating in reverse? Should it still be B? Because like the gravity is pulling the water down, and yeah. it's not like it's going mm -hmm. like forcefully at the back. If it's like you're pushing it forcefully, it depends on the speed. No, yeah. that's it's an acceleration. Yeah. So yeah. it's increasing its velocity. Yeah. So uh -huh. the water will always push back. Mm -hmm. okay. yes. Always when you're yeah. talking about so, acceleration. Now, if we're yes. talking about constant speed, then yeah, this one could be moving at a constant speed. I would say that one's accelerating forward. Yes. Yeah. So the, the water pushes the back. back. Goes to the back. And then, so would you guys agree this one's in reverse? Yeah. 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 Because the water's pushing mm -hmm. in the opposite way. Yeah. Yeah, right? So can you guys tell which one is the oh, one I at rest? I, mm. the... I would say this is probably accelerating. <laughs> I used this to the This one's breaking. No, well, I'm well, oh, sorry. Accelerating forward. One is accelerating in reverse, and oh, okay. one is at rest. Okay, reverse, accelerating forward, and then at rest. Okay, we got it. You guys agree with him? Yeah. Yeah. Why would you say this one's at rest? I guess I'll start with that. Um, well, you know, though, you know, if it's if, if it's in a flat surface, the water's gonna, you know, be be still, so be flat. exactly yeah. be still and level, right? Yeah. Yeah. If, if you accelerate it uh, forward, you said this one's it, right? Mm -hmm. Why is this one the one accelerating forward? Because of your, I guess. When you're going forward, that there's no force and push off, and it causes water to fall back. Right. You, 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 yeah, you got it. Yeah. So because of inertia, the water wants to remain like this. Mm -hmm. But again, the water, the the, the the truck pushing on the water, you know, again, the water pushes back uh -huh. against that. So it displaces, you could say, the water, you know, reacts to the acceleration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Now, so which of these three trucks is at rest? This one, right? Yeah. B? B. Yeah, you guys got it. Why would you guys say B is the one at rest? The water is like still. Mm -hmm. yeah. How would you describe it? Would you say it's a level? Yeah. The water is level, yeah. right? Still? Yeah. So, which one is accelerating forward, A or C? Uh, a. A. Why would you guys say A? Because the inertia. Inertia, yeah. So, when you accelerate the truck, the water pushes yeah, back yeah. Right in the opposite direction of the acceleration, right? So, do you guys think it's possible, again, once the water is at rest, right? Do you guys think it's possible to accelerate this water bottle across the table, which is only four feet? without the water displacing in other words the water remain level yeah you think it's possible to do that yeah. to accelerate that in one second can you try it in one second in one, one second, second. Oh, in one second, second. Oh, okay maybe yeah. not one second but yeah like in general How, what if we doubled the distance to eight feet in one second you think we could do it even even worse right yeah yeah so we, we could we say that accelerating a bottle when it's at rest and in any direction you know eight feet uh, without the water displacing could we say that that defies physics yeah yeah, yeah right that's obvious right so even when i accelerate down the water wants to push up again because of inertia water wants to remain where it's at in space right yeah. so this is the real reason why i'm doing this now do you think it's possible for me to have uh, water at rest for example like this mm -hmm. this table is only four feet you know in distance do you think it's possible to accelerate this from being at rest to the end of the table which is only four feet without the water displacing so if i can accelerate this in one second by the way just you think I could do that? You think it's physically possible to accelerate this bottle and the water remain at rest? Oh man. That, that, would you say that that's impossible? I would say that's impossible. Yeah, I would say it's impossible unless maybe it's on some type of like, I, I don't know. No, yeah, yeah, I don't think yeah, it's yeah exactly. You could, you could accelerate this and with using, you know, thrusters. You could, mm -hmm. you, you could use a bungee cord to accelerate it. It doesn't matter how you accelerate the bottle, the water will always displace because water is a fluid, yeah. right? It requires containment and again, it doesn't have a shape. So it only reacts to, to, to when, the, when it's being accelerated, right? Mm. Now, this is the main question. And, and by the way, um, even when I accelerate down, the water wants to push up. It, re yeah. it reacts. Again, the water always pushes back in the opposite direction of acceleration. So, so if I was to ask you guys, mm -hmm. in one second, you think it's possible for me to accelerate this bottle over a distance of four feet mm -hmm. in one second without the water displacing? You think that's possible? Yeah. Yeah. No, right? The water's always going to push back because that's physics. That's reality, right? Mm -hmm. I would say anybody that claims that, it, it, that claim defies physics, right? Yeah, yeah. Let me ask you guys this. Mm -hmm. Do you think when I release this object and it's at rest and I release it, do you think it accelerates down to the ground at 9.8 meters per second? Not yeah. always. Not always. Okay. Yeah. So when I accelerate this bottle down, mm -hmm. it always displaces yeah. when I right. actually accelerate it. The water mm -hmm. wants to push up. Yeah. In reality, here, let me just show you guys this because I have it... Uh, uh, in slow motion just so you guys can get a better visual mm -hmm. when I actually accelerate versus free fall mm -hmm. we can see based on the laws of motion and inertia mm -hmm. that the one on the free fall is not accelerating down yep. it's not so what's happening there is 
when you release an object, mm -hmm. a pulling force of the earth doesn't exist. It's actually the earth pushing up against you right now. Mm -hmm. Because so there's the, added force on the water. When yeah, yeah, so right now, you're not being pulled to you're the earth. Pushed. It's the earth right. moving up like that, literally. Yeah. And that's why your body's resisting that because of inertia, and that's why we have mm -hmm. weight. Mm -hmm. So this magical force that accelerates objects in free fall doesn't exist. It's actually the earth moving up. Do you guys believe when I release this object, when it's at rest, do you guys believe that object accelerated down to the ground? Ooh. By gravity, for example? Yeah. You guys believe that? So, based on the simple facts of how water behaves when it's being accelerated, again, the water always pushes back. Again, mm -hmm. even when I accelerate like this, it pushes back. And I can show you guys a, 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 a video I did in slow motion so you guys can get the better uh, visual of it. But basically, the fact that the water, again, this is free fall versus acceleration. So, free fall is this, this one. The water doesn't react whatsoever. Oh, so, in wow. reality, when you release something into free fall, it doesn't actually go down to the earth. Yeah. So that's why gravity as a pulling force is just theory, and it's always going to be a theory. The fact is, the force of the earth is not a pull, it's a push. Oh. So the earth is pushing up on you right now, so it's literally moving up. So, the, oh. so when you release an object, because we're already at a constant velocity right now, yeah. when you release an object, it starts to lose that velocity. So the object didn't accelerate towards the ground, it's the ground that came up to meet it. Oh, so because shoot. we're connected to the earth as well, it only looks like it went down because everything else is moving up. Wow. Does that make that's, sense? That's, that's a true. So again, I don't know if you heard of flat earth. Flat right? earth, yeah. So flat earth versus globe earth is a fast dichotomy because they both claim that there's a, a, a magical force accelerating objects to the ground. Mm -hmm. So the, the side with the, behind the flat earth is that they claim it's motionless. So they disregard the fact that that a, that a force is a push, that the Earth is pushing up. Yeah. So that's where the controlled opposition is. That's how they're controlling this information. Oh. So over 95% of flat Earth channels online claim, claim the Earth is motionless. And they're just debating against Globers, again, pushing a false dichotomy. Yeah. So that's where the PSYOP is. They're both PSYOPs, of motionless flat Earth and a Glober. The fact is the Earth is a level plane that's pushing up against you. So it's moving. Oh, that's crazy. That's yeah, yeah. So let me ask you guys this. Do you guys believe that when this is at rest, and I release it, it went down to the ground. Yeah. Yeah. So the fact is, again, based on the uh, physics of inertia and how water behaves when it's contained and being accelerated, yeah. this is what it looks like when I actually accelerate down versus free fall. So free fall is showing us that the bottle's not accelerating down. So gravity as a pulling force, that's why it's a theory, because it doesn't exist. Objects don't accelerate to, to the ground. What's happening is that the earth is not pulling you, it's pushing up against you. So the earth is literally moving up, pushing up against you right now. And because your body has inertia, it wants to remain at rest. That's why we have weight. Because our inertia is resisting the earth's push. So when you release an object, it didn't move towards the ground. The ground moved up to the object. Wait, you don't think gravity exists? Gravity is a push, not a pull. So the gravity, oh, yeah, that gravity is moving up. I mean, the yeah. earth is moving up, pushing up against you. And that's what gravity is. It's the motion of the earth. So again, if I was to ask you guys, if... You, do you guys believe the Earth is a globe? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so if the Earth is a globe and we can verify that objects don't move towards the ground and it's the ground that moves up to the object, how will that work from a globe, if I may ask? How can the Earth be pushing up or moving up instead of objects going down? So if something, if we drop something here in North America, but we know it's the Earth that moves up to the object mm -hmm. and it's not the object that moves down to there, how can an object move up here in, in North America and move up in Australia? I mean, how can the Earth move up here in, in, in Australia? Is it because of the rotation? Yeah, isn't there like a gravitational field? Well, that's what I'm saying. The there, there is no gravitational <laughs> Are you field. if an object is stationary in time and space? So if when we release an object, right, mm -hmm. we, can, we can falsify the claim that uh, this accelerated down by the fact that there's no displacement. Mm -hmm. Not even that, you know, have you ever guys heard of an accelerometer? Yeah. So you yeah. can download an app on your phone mm -hmm. and it's an accelerometer. What happens with that accelerometer when you're holding it and you accelerate left, you accelerate right, up or down any direction, it's going to register that acceleration, it's mm -hmm. going to register that force. Right. Mm -hmm. When we put that accelerometer into free fall, it doesn't detect any acceleration down. It detects zero. Oh. So the only time an accelerometer detects a force it's when, when there's when it's when, when it's, it's connected force. when it's applied force or when it's connected to the earth. Oh. So if you have an accelerometer at rest here on earth, mm -hmm. it's gonna detect the force going up. So that's showing us that the earth is literally moving up yeah. relative to us. So our up is the same as people in Australia. So up is parallel all across the plane. Mm -hmm. So that's what I was trying to say. If we could verify that it's the earth moving up, that would mean the globe earth will have to be expanding. If, if it's the earth moving up to the objects and not the objects moving down to the earth, mm -hmm. that wouldn't work from a globe. Um, because the earth, again, will have to be expanding mm -hmm. 
to be able to do to be able to you know explain that but in reality the true cause of gravity the fact that it's a push force of the earth not a pull debunks the globe because again it wouldn't work because the globe earth needs uh, physical downwards acceleration mm -hmm. they need mass attracting mass or that's why they have these theories of, of of newton and einstein because they want people to believe this because the facts show that it's the earth moving up and that debunks the whole globe earth model <laughs> orbits okay. wouldn't work you know all the explanations they give us about the earth with gravity mm -hmm. they're all based on a false premise so if i was to ask you guys respectfully what's the number one proof that convinces you that the earth is a ball well, I would say one big one probably like just NASA pictures of the Earth. I mean, pictures I, of the Earth. I trust NASA. And okay. also number two, like I've, I've seen, you know, of like water level. You know, like if the Earth was flat, then water level would stay at a constant level, let's say like 17 feet, right? And then since we're at a globe, depending on where you're at, it's gonna go from like 15, 17, down to 15. So, so that's consistent all, you know, no matter. Where I'll start you're with at. the NASA one real quick, yeah. and then I'll get to that one real quick. Uh, so the NASA one. If I showed you a picture of me flying or walking on water, would you believe I could do that? Uh, probably not. No. Why wouldn't you believe me? Oh uh, well, I mean, number one, like. I don't really know you personally, but, right. you know, I wouldn't say like you're, I mean, again, I don't know you, so I wouldn't, I, you're not like an accredited person. I would say, right now, if yeah. you claim to me that you could fly or walk on water and show me a picture, I would, this, oh. I would dismiss that because that defies physics. Mm. So you're more dense in water, obviously, so mm. water can't support you. you yeah. know, so water has properties, right, mm. that we can defy. Mm -hmm. That's why nobody can walk on water. I mean, people believe Jesus did, but again, that's just a story. But if you claim to me that you can do things that defy physics, and you show me a picture or a video, then I know for sure that's Photoshop or CGI because again, yeah. if you can't show me that practically, you know, then again, I'm gonna go with my common sense that, that defies physics and it's not possible. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So again, when it comes to the globe Earth, you said that when water is still, you would say it's flat or, or, or level? I, yeah, level or right? flat, yeah. So based on the geometry of the Earth that they tell us, again, because they're showing us these images, right? Uh -huh. Which is a shape, essentially. So they do tell us the dimensions of the Earth is basically 3,959 uh, miles in radius, mm -hmm. which means there has to be curvature every mile, and every mile it has to increase. So in the first mile, there's an 8-inch drop, second mile, 32 inches, and by the third mile, this would be 6 feet of curvature. Mm -hmm. So if we went out to a giant lake to physically measure for this curvature, they're trying to tell us that the water's going to be bending 6 feet in 3 miles, but the fact is, water, when it's level, I mean, when it's contained and at rest, it's always going to be a level surface. Yeah. So again, the physics of water, again, shows that there is no convexity of the Earth. Mm. There's no curvature. So again, physics, again, shows us that, that the globe Earth is impossible. So I know you guys heard of flat Earth, right? Yeah. So I'm going to give you guys a quick tip. Uh, over 95% of flat Earthers claim the Earth is motionless. In other words, the motionless flat Earth versus the globe Earth is a false dichotomy because they're both uh, pleading for a magical force that can accelerate objects down without displacement, which mm -hmm. defies physics. Yeah. Water will always displace when you accelerate a bottle, you know. Yeah. That, that, that's, that's what matter does, you know. So who am I going to trust, reality, or am I going to trust man's interpretation? Yeah. You know, and that's why, again, gravity is always going to be a theory. So if I was at... Okay. I guess... So okay, if you guys got to go here, I can give you guys my, my channel. You guys can check it out. Okay. You guys have any questions, check it out. Yeah. All right. Uh, All right. You. you guys have a good one. So, again, so you're trying to push the idea of a flat earth? So flat earth, I'm gonna tell you wh why is that. That's a mm -hmm. psyop as well. And there's a false dichotomy going on be mm -hmm. between flat earth and globe earth. Over 95% of flat earthers and YouTube uh, flat earthers as well, um, believe that or claim the earth is motionless. So in other words, they actually claim that there is a magical acceleration as well in free fall that doesn't displace the water. Mm -hmm. You know, so again, that's the false dichotomy. They're pushing two models that are both, you know, pleading for this magical force that doesn't exist. Again, the, the true force is the Earth pushing up on you. It's moving. That's the force. So a pulling force doesn't exist because even combustion engines, if you want to move something, it's all chain reaction of motion. Something has to push something else to move something else. Yeah. Like when you ride a bike, if yeah. the chain breaks, then that motion can't be transferred to the back wheel anymore. So again, motion is push, something pressing on something else. Yeah. So when people claim there's an acceleration of this object down, what pushed it down? Nothing. Nothing. That's where theory comes in to mm -hmm. fill in that gap. But okay. the fact is, again, they can't say that the earth is moving up because then they can push the globe, mm -hmm. you know? So the false economy is the flat earth, motionless flat earth. So that's how they're controlling this information and just making a mockery of it, you know? That, again, they're, they're just debating two ideas that, that is not true. So how do you Ooh. solve the theory that, and let's say you had multiple... Um, I mean, here, you guys could take my information, you guys can give it a read. These are the six main proofs that debunk the globe. And uh, thanks for having a chat with me, man. <laughs> So you know, if you had multiple sure. objects, let's say, that are taller than the horizon you can see, and they're yeah. all exactly the same level, like perfectly level, because sure. you're saying on sure. a flat surface. Sure. 
and you were to shine, I guess, a light a laser. one point all the way across. Yeah. How do you deal with that fact that it would be blocked at some point? So, if I was to shine a laser through water, let's say we had a a pool, right, and we shine a laser through it, is that laser gonna go straight? No, because you're re yeah, yeah, you're refracting. refracting. So, would you say you would get the same results with the atmosphere? A refraction, in other words? Yes or no? You wouldn't get that much, I would assume. But you would still get some, right? Would you agree or disagree? I'd say minimal, but that refraction... My point is, the reason why they push laser experiments is the fact that you're never going to get a conclusive answer. But if we actually build a level structure over a body of water like this, and we made sure that it was straight, the, the surface of water should bend or deviate uh, from the level, showing that it is curvy, showing that it is a ball. You know? right. But the fact is, water doesn't have the physical ability to do that. Water will always collapse on its own form again is in his own weight because it doesn't have a shape and it's always going to form an equal surface which is level which is horizontal uh, it's horizontal to your perspective but not to the, the, i mean again we could go out and measure to to make sure that what do you believe well the earth uh, the earth shows me that it's level and it's level uh relative to the vertical which is the motion of the earth so the plumb when you hold a plumb you guys know what a plumb line is that's the vertical, right? Mm -hmm. And water always reorientates perpendicular okay. to that vertical, which is the motion. Because if we accelerate, again, water this way, water re always reorientates relative to the direction of the container. So the earth is a container. And the water on the oceans, lakes, they're all showing us the direction that it's moving, which mm -hmm. is the vertical. Because again, water always levels so off. Shape would the earth be so like so uh, the, the, the earth as a whole, uh, uh, the shape of the earth, is unknown. Yeah. So right. the surface we live on is level. Yeah, we, we all look, have the same physics lab, actually. Okay, okay, no worries here. Oh, thank um, you. Yeah, no worries. You want to take my channel and give it a look? I'll, I'll take a look. Yeah, here you go. Uh, here you go. All right, take care. Thank you. Yeah. It is. Another thing is the fact that there is no physical downwards acceleration, like aka gravity as a pulling force, that falsifies the globe Earth model because the globe Earth requires objects to accelerate towards the Earth. Because if it's the Earth pushing up against you, like literally moving up, how will that work from a globe? It's constant force, it's not accelerating. Okay, well if you release an object from here, there's gonna be a bigger impact if you release it from higher. Would you agree or disagree? No, the gravity is still 9.8 meters per second. So you're saying that if I drop something here, for example, very low, my phone's not gonna break, but if I drop it from higher, it will break. Because there's a... The acceleration is the same the whole time. That's but it's 9.8 meters per second uh, squared. Yeah. So it is an acceleration. In other words, the distance traveled in the first second is less than the distance traveled in the second second. Yeah, but that doesn't change the acceleration. Exactly, you're changing is the height, not the gravity. No, but what I'm saying is the distance traveled in the first second is less than the distance traveled in the second second. Would you agree that's an acceleration or not? No. What is acceleration? Explain it to me. An object going on constant velocity. That's, a, that's not acceleration, that's constant. That's a constant velocity. So what's acceleration if it's not increasing the distance traveled you can by have the second? Acceleration. Yeah, you could have constant acceleration, exactly. But if you have constant acceleration, you should have displacement. Not only that, you should be able to physically measure that downwards acceleration with simple accelerometers, which don't detect the downwards acceleration. Yeah. All right, man. You guys take care. You guys want to take the info? No, nah, All right. Take care.